finished milling the recess for the clamping pad, and how that works is right here, maybe you can see it, is a quarter of an inch wide, or I guess it's slightly narrower than a quarter of an inch, and a fifty thousandth of an inch high ledge. And the pad will sit on it like that. And then when the thumb screw is tightened down, it'll act as a pivot point. Which then the other side of this pad will clamp up on the bottom of the ways and lock the stop in place. So what I've got to do now is drill and tap a hole for the actual thumb screw. I've repositioned the part and got it all dialed in. So the next thing I need to do is machine a 45 across here. And what that's going to do is allow a spot for the dial indicator to rest and stay out of the way. body is to chamfer all the corners I think my hand might come in contact with. Hopefully it'll make the part look a little nicer and it will prevent me from cutting myself every time I use it. So I just need to touch off here and then feed in and see what it looks like.
So a couple nights ago when I finished machining the chamfers, I took the stop over to the lathe to try it out and see how everything was going. And I ran into a small issue. The first issue being the force that I could generate comfortably with the thumb screws. So, well, I could easily use the thumb screw to hold the dial indicator in place. You know, it's just a dial indicator. There's almost no force on it unless you were to run it all the way back. I couldn't generate, a, couldn't generate enough force on the, the actual hard stop to hold, the, to hold it in place. So, let me get it down here. I'll show you kind of what would happen. So what would happen is, if I had it in place, if I'd run it over, even with just light pressure, and you'd hit it, if you hit it too fast or hit it with a little more pressure, it would move. And you could see that show up on the dial indicator because, you know, it would start progressing. You know, it might show 10 thousandths. And then you'd hit it, and it'd start, you know, it'd go, it would start reading 11 every time. So basically, I just wasn't able to lock down hard enough. So if I have to do it for one of them, I'm going to do it for both anyway. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to switch back to just the set screws and an Allen wrench. And that will, I've already tested it, that will let me generate enough force. And I had a similar problem with the actual larger thumb screw that would actually lock the, 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 um, lock the stop down to the waist. So what I ended up doing was I took the bottom piece, which I had originally um, put a counterbore in so this would sit down in, um, milled this stainless insert and pressed it in just so I had a better bearing surface. I'm going to have to use, at least initially here, just a regular class class 10, I think this is either class 10 or class 12, regular hex bolt. And again, that will work. I might get, next time I place an order from a bunch of stuff from McMaster Car or something like that, I might order a, um, what do you call it, an adjustable bolt, you know, the types that you have on your... Um, like the locking um, bolts you might find on your Lay's cross slide or something like that, you know, it turns it and you can pull it out, turn it, you know, let it go back in so you can keep adjusting it. I might try one of those. If not, I'm going to be stuck using a wrench. I mean, it's still better than the old one, which had a socket head catch screw through the top because I won't be digging chips out of it just so I can adjust it. And it should still be easier to adjust when I put the rare earth magnets in place because those are definitely holding it in place. So the tasks for this evening are to um, clean it up. It's got lots of little dings on it. I know lots of people had suggested that I anodize it, but I, I really like the look of just raw aluminum. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to break out one of my old surface plates, and I'm just going to lap this on some, I think I have 400 grit in the shop right now, so I'm going to lap this on some 400 grit wet dry paper. And then I'll Loctite this in place. Well, sorry, I'll Loctite the rare earth magnets in place. So what I have set up here is an old 12 inch by 18 inch surface plate that I got from a friend when he actually received it. I don't know if you can see it, but this whole corner here was broken off. There's a chip out of this edge and it was just a cheaper one he got from Enco. And he's, he was like, do you want it? And I was like, sure. So I use this for a lot of lapping and metalworking, woodworking, all kinds of stuff. Like if you're flattening the, flattening the black of a plain iron, or like a brand new one, just putting down some sandpaper like this, some wet dry, putting a little mineral spirits, which is what I actually have down on this, does a nice job of it. So all you really have to do is, I've done a bunch of surfaces, so like this one's not done yet, so you just make sure it's wet with, in this case it's got plenty of mineral spirits on it, you can see I've already done a bunch of work, and you just lightly, just forward and back. You don't want to put a lot of pressure down, if you put a lot of pressure down you might find it'll skip, which will um, can leave a bad finish. That's probably enough, actually. Oh, so I've got here and here, and I've got a little bit left here where you can see the still the see the machining marks. So just a couple more swipes, and I'll have this side done. I can just flip it up on the edge. Like I said, since these surfaces are just, I'm just trying to clean them up and make them look nice and make them easier on the hands, like if I roll a little bit to one side or a little bit to the other, all it's going to do is just round over the little 45 degree angles here. And that's 
That's perfectly fine. It'll just make it easier on my hand. So I'm going to finish this up and then clean this up real well. Then I'll go to um, the bench and um, I'll show you how I'm going to lock tight the uh, magnets in place. I forgot to mention it earlier, but to get the inside edges or any of the small edges, I just used this. I have a, I made a bunch of these up. I have them just laying around the shop in some cases even with different grits. This is just some 3 8 Ultic birch plywood. Just cut the strips, you know, it's, actually I think this, a lot of them are just off cuts I have. I just save them. And then it's just the wet dry is just attached to it with some um, spray adhesive. You know, just put some spray adhesive on the back of the sandpaper, press it down. Once it dries, just come back with an X-Acto knife or a, a utility knife and just cut it off so it's nice and flush. You can almost think of it as a really, really fine um, safe edge file. Um, okay, so I've already put the first magnet in place and I don't want these to be like right up flush because I bought these so long ago I can't remember but I think these were chrome plated. Um, so I don't want that rubbing against the, the waist of my lathe. So what I did is I made this. This is just a piece of bar stock in this case, hex. I don't know if you can see it or not, but right here in the center is just a little, um, I don't know, turn down section for lack of, I don't know if I call it a boss or what. But it's turned down, it's smaller in diameter than the magnet, and it's only ten thousandths of an inch long. So to do this, what I have to do is, well, first thing is probably get the magnet centered. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, Take some Loctite, in this case this is just 603, which is just retaining compound. Drop a few drops down in the bottom of the bore. Down in the bottom is actually the important part. Because um, when I put this in, I'm going to leave this sitting here. And if it's on top, you could accidentally Loctite the, uh, the bar in place and you don't want to do that. So I just got some uh, toothpicks here. And I'm just pulling the Loctite up the side of the board, not all the way up to the top, but just enough that I know that it's going to, that the magnet's going to come in contact with it, essentially. That there's ex excess in the bottom that dries, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Got it all. Pretty well, I think, spread out here. I mean, this is, there's probably half a thousandths, maybe a thousandths clearance on this, so this Loctite will set pretty fast. Can't see it in the light here, let me get it. Okay, just set that aside. So now all I have to do is take this, and get it down in there. Like that, I can feel the other magnet kind of pushing on it. Just like that. So now that, let me grab some uh, towels here. So I can prop this up. Let's see here. Like that. So what's gonna happen is that little boss is gonna actually push it down and then the regular exterior, I don't know what you want to call that, the, the face is going to push down against this. It's going to push the magnet down in ten thousandths from the surface, which will give me, you know, that's nothing for the magnet to put pulling force on, on the waves, but it'll keep it from, you know, physically contact. Now that the Loctite is set up, I'm going to call this done, at least until I can place an order with one of the industrial supply places next time I need to order a bunch of stuff. I'll get some adjustable T-handles and see if any of those work for me. But, as you can see, you can hear it. The magnets do a good job of holding it in place. Um, I won't even need to put the screw base in place just to use the dial indicator. I mean, I could just, I mean, it's not going anywhere. Slide it forward, slide it back. Works real well. If I put the, um, the little clamp underneath, I, have to, just, I tried this over once already. It's kind of a pain in the butt to get it in place the first time, but. I mean, usually I'd never take this thing off, so it shouldn't be that bad once I get it on here. This is 
is kind of why I want the, the adjustable handles. Get it up here close. down tight so I can run the carriage over run into the stop and it's going to read the same thing every time if I wanted to adjust the stop like I said for now I'm going to have to use set screws Just forward and back lock it down and it's nice and repeatable and nice and rigid.